bottom, you should see a CC button if it would be helpful to see the words being spoken and sung. Take a moment to center yourselves as we prepare for worship. We're reminded that the land that we are on was originally stewarded by the Lenape people, and uh, we are so grateful to be on this land and to uh, be in communion with each other, trying to honor the land and um, forge relationships with our indigenous siblings. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I need to remind you of. Just that we are recording our service over Zoom. We do pause that um, during our time of prayer for confidentiality, but just know that we are recording. And if you're on Zoom and you have any tech issues, um, please reach out to Care Mesner um, via chat, and uh, you will be assisted. Care is raising his hand to show you who he is in case you're here with us for the first time, in which case you are very welcome here. Our opening hymn is in the New Century hymnal. That's the black one. Uh, we're going to be singing all the verses of number 11, Bring Many Names. We'll bring the words up on the screen, and we invite you to sing along with us. You may stand in body or spirit. note of hospitality in the sanctuary. It's a little warm. We do have some ice water up here in glasses. If anyone would like to help themselves doing service, please do so. 
Um, I'm excited about our opening sentences this morning. They were written by our guest preacher today, Reverend Retta Morgan. Um, she calls this piece, Love No Matter What. And I'm looking for two volunteers. I'm hoping that we might be able to find someone on Zoom who would like to read the leader part for us. And then somebody in the sanctuary who would um, read the people part um, with the microphone as we join in. Thank you, Beth, for being our leader. And then in the sanctuary, do we have somebody who will lead us in the people part? Here we go. Sorry, Dan, I didn't mean to prioritize Aaron over you. Um, you can begin. Thank you, Beth. It could be that we are here to love, and there will be love. May love resound and resonate deep, deep within. We will love while the world comes undone. We will love in the jagged breath of trauma's jet stream. There will be love in one place around the city, around the world. There will be love in deep set opposition. There will be love in the hole we can't fill. I am love even in hopelessness. We are love in the lies of rage. I am love in the face of fear. We are love, are love in the presence of death. I will be love in the will of unexpressed dread. May there be love in the tears from the sea in reality. We will be love in the eulogies of our power mongering species. Yes, love is possible even as we grieve all we are losing. And then we will be love across the continuum of our humanity. We wait, seek in love, and look for love where we have never known it to be. Lord, let love be our next breath. Amen. Amen. Our act of praise is in the New Century Hymnal, the Black Hymnal number 32, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale.
Amen. It's time for our time with children. We don't, I don't believe we have any children in the sanctuary. I'm wondering if we have any on Zoom or if I've overlooked anyone in the sanctuary, let me know. Okay. Well, um, as I've stated before, I've got to save my material for when we have kids here. Um, but I am excited next week um, to talk about some of these flags, new flags that are decorating our sanctuary, thanks to Terry and Rachel. I'm really excited to talk more about that um, part of our spiritual life. Um, investment has been to get some flags that represent different communities that are important to us. So we'll be doing that with the kids in the future, not just for the kids, but with the kids. Um, uh, we have several announcements to bring your attention to this morning. We will bring those up on the screen. Um, first, we have some thank yous. Um, first to our worship team this morning. Uh, Michelle Williams is handling our tech this morning. Palmer Williams is doing our wonderful camera work. Um, Beth is our online greeter. Care is our worship leader and usher. Jaime is our musician on the piano who's blessed us this morning. Um, and we've also been blessed by the voices in our singing group, Ellen, Kate, and Dan. Thank you all so much for um, making today just that much better. Last week we had the ice cream uh, social fundraiser. It was a big success, mostly because we connected with each other and kids were running around um, and we were able to raise $212. So I just wanted to thank everybody who was here or who invited people, and especially to the people who made it happen, our fundraising team. Thank you so much for that. Um, there is one announcement that didn't make it here, um, but we've been talking about it and I've emailed about it. Um, the non-binary non day of celebration is, um, if you're local in West Philly, Clark Park, that's happening today from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, there's a flyer out in the hallway here if you want to take it with you so that you know where you're going. Um, it's put on by the transmarch.org if you want more information. Uh, a reminder, if you are someone who gives online, this is the time of year because our fiscal year changes over July 1st, your online gift might need a little bit of attention. So we are reminding you in the next week, if you can go in and verify your settings, if you've made a pledge for a recurring gift of 21-22, you want to go in, make sure there's an end date to that and that your new recurring gift is started and ended as you want with the new year. Um, if you need any assistance, you can reach out to Karen or myself. The finance team is meeting on Monday at 7 p.m. Um, so everybody should know that because those are open meetings. If somebody else is interested in sitting in, you can just reach out for the link. Uh, new council members are going to meet on Zoom for an orientation and social time on Tuesday at 5 p.m. If anybody wants to join in because you're interested in learning more about the committees or you're a council member who wants to welcome new people on, please reach out and we'll, we'll get you to join that gathering. If you are planning summer, summer travels, please consider bringing water back for our Water Sunday when we make our baptismal fonts in our outdoor service. That will happen on September 11th, so collect water from wherever you might travel or from someplace local. Um, this summer, um, we are pausing paid custodial service while the building use is low, so we're asking for volunteers. If you're able to come in and help stock the bathrooms, do some vacuuming and things of that nature, um, please reach out and there's a Sign Up Genius link or you can reach out to John Hack at the email um, listed. Um, I am hosting drop-in office hours um, most Wednesdays from 12, 12 to 2, including this week. Uh, right downstairs in the children's area of the church. Um, please stop by and say hello um, if you are available. And if you want one-on-one -on -one time at a more convenient time for you, my contact information is in the bulletin and on the screen. Um, always looking for assistance with worship facilitation, with camera, tech, greeters, 
So please be aware of that. We appreciate your assistance. Um, if you have any questions for church council or feedback or, or questions, especially about committees, the email address for church council is listed there. And you can also reach out if you have any prayer requests um, at prayers at chestnuthillunited.org for us to be praying for you in an ongoing confidential manner. I think that's the end of my announcements, unless there's anybody else who has one that I missed. Okay. Um, at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest preacher. Uh, Reverend Retta Morgan is here with us. You've already heard some beautiful words that she created. She is a singing healer, a spiritual activist, and interfaith minister who has been gathering tools for healing and inspiration for over 40 years. Through her gifts of prayer, poetry, facilitation, and sermonizing, she cultivates hope and nurtures connection in her community as a pathway back to belonging and wholeness. I was introduced to Retta through um, Nyla Francis, a friend of ours. Um, uh, Nyla started uh, Salt Trails Philly, which is an interdisciplinary collective that honors grief through gathering rituals and the arts. Speaking of Nyla. <laughs> um, <laughs> And um, we are glad to be connected to each other through Nyla and through Nyla's work. Um, as a facilitator and coach, uh, Retta is known for her ability to support others to be bold, to heal their self-limiting beliefs, and integrate their internal healing with their social movement work. This support is essential in cultivating the powerful spiritual activism that is needed in these times. We are so honored and blessed to have you here. Reverend Retta Morgan. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> For a number of different reasons. I am an interfaith minister, and I think this may be the first time I've been invited to speak in a Christian setting in maybe like 30 years. Uh, so I'm just giddy with excitement. Uh, it feels to me a kind of reconciliation, a kind of, of um, you know, I talk a lot about love. You can tell about those, those sentences I wrote. All of my ministry, all of my work has been about um, trying to locate love because I didn't feel like I had it, you know. And so the work of healing myself became my work out in the world, right? And that included the ways in which I um, sort of fell out of love with church. Never fell out of love with Christ, but I fell out of love with church. And, and over all of the years, you know, love is love is love all the time. So I get to be in love with you. So I'm so happy that I've been invited to come and share a little bit with you. I'm starting with uh, the first reading, which happens to be a song. Uh, all during COVID, I, I feel like I heard a call to write songs and poetry and to be a presence of this love that I speak of during uh, just the, you know, I start naming all the things that are going on now. I take the whole 15-minute sermon just to talk about all the things that are happening, right? So, but just to keep coming back to love has been my own practice. And uh, this song that I want to share with you is one of those songs I wrote uh, for these times. <sighs> My heart is broken open All kinds of love is spilling on out my heart is broken, open, yeah. All kinds of pieces spilling on out, is spilling on out, is spilling on out for you. My body's filled with sorrow, hey, hey. all kinds of pain is spilling on out. 
But I'm holding space for your refuge. All kinds of grace is spilling on out, is spilling on out, is spilling on out for you. My mind's chatter won't let me go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All kinds of fear is spilling on out. out. Each breath returns me to my center, hey, and all kinds of healing is spilling on out, is spilling on out, spilling on out for you. When will this all be over? Yeah. All kinds of wondering is spilling on out. Till then, it's life I'm gonna trust in. Hey, all kinds of compassion is spilling on out. Hey, all kinds of love is spilling on out. All kinds of grace is spilling on out. Hey, all kinds of joy is spilling on out. Hey, spilling on out, spilling out of my broken heart for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashe. So I think the reading comes next, right? Yes. And am I supposed to say anything at the end or just go right into the sermon? So just read and go right in. Okay. I'm trying to remember back the last time I was in the church, it was an Episcopal church. And there's a thing the priest says when, before you read, I can't remember. So I'm going to say my version. So, from the most holy and sacred word of God. As my mothering God has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my God's commandments and remain in her love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you subordinates because a subordinate does not know a superior's business. Instead, I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from Abba God. You did not choose me, but I chose you to go forth and bear fruit. Your fruit must endure must endure, so that whatever you ask of Abba God, in my name, God will give you. This command I give you, love each other, love each other. Y'all, love each other. That's the commandment, to love each other. How you doing with that? Doing pretty good with that, loving each other. I, I don't really do so well at it a lot of the time. I think some of us choose our work because we need it. I'm not really here to teach you. I'm still teaching myself. And the, and the aftermath is I hope that I can have some of that rub off on you. I'm still learning what that means. And how, what a glorious, glorious uh, adventure to keep coming back to love, to keep reminding myself that it's possible, to keep digging into scriptures and the many scriptures that I get to read from around the world. The scriptures that are emerging through people in these times, uh, there's some who call these times 
uh, the time of the great uh, turning, right? So many things being uh, dismantled and changing, sometimes painfully so, and sometimes very excitingly so, right? So much moving and shaking and changing. It is a great time for birth, for the new, for innovation, for, for, for those of us who will stay anchored in traditions that are ancient. It's a great time for re-embodying, re-enlivening, re-interpretation, right? Just a great time. And so, um, I'm so excited to be with you today to talk to you a little bit about this idea of uh, looking at how we define love and daring to redefine love in a way that's big enough to hold us during these times. Right. So I want to start by just talking about how hard it is uh, sometimes to remember that we are love and come from love. I don't know how much good it'll do us to define love as bigger and bolder if we don't believe we are at the core of what love is, right? Um, it's taken me a lifetime to live into the words I speak, and I'm still living into the words I speak, so I don't suppose we'll leave here all enlightened, although that would be glorious for my bio if it did happen. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so in the ways that we... Us, care for ourselves and the way that we reflect love for those close in for us and the ways that we have compassion when we are unable to reflect that love, right? Even that is a loving act. Um, if we dare to self-reflect and keep looking in. I think a lot that I talk about resides in the unconscious. So there's a little bit of work to, to sit and reflect and allow yourself to look beyond the everyday practical. You have to kind of go in and kind of go down deep a little bit to ask this question, how much do I believe and embody that I actually am the love of God uh, expressed in this particular form, right? I think, I don't know, I think our culture makes it hard to believe that that's true. What I love about spiritual work, it doesn't have to be logically true. If it's too reasonable and logical, it might not be spiritually based, right? We go beyond what the logic says and does. We get to delve be beyond that, get to go to, to the roots, right? What's under what, what we say is logical. We get to go there together. And in those places, we get to, to, to you know, to luxuriate, to, to think about, to turn over and wrestle with things that are illogical. Some of those sentences I wrote, I don't know how you feel, even as I'm writing them, I'm like, ain't nobody thinking about love down there, in there, what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? It takes something, right? It takes something. You have to show up a certain way to think that you can love in the deep set opposition. It takes something. No, we ain't trying to be loving. We're trying to be right. That's what we're trying to be for the most part. We're trying to have the other person see our point because our point is the right way, right? That's, that's just human. It's just human. It takes something extraordinary to go down there and say, well, maybe that other side has a point. Maybe there are things that we have in common. Maybe we can start from the places that we have in common, not in the outer edges where we absolutely disagree. I bet that person loves their kids just like I do, right? There's a whole line of things that we can find that we have in common before we get to the places that hurt so bad because they divide us. When we're trying to love them, we're trying to be loving, there's all this that gets in the way, right, and, and, and can have us believe that we don't get to be in love with that person because of their stance, because of whatever things that we get triggered by that feel otherizing, feel like they're on the other side, right? It takes something. It takes deep communion with God. It takes going down in the places that feel like they're true. You gotta actually uh, challenge. It feels true that this person can't love me because of the way they think, right? It feels like that's the truth. We've got to be willing to go down inside, go somewhere. In the old black church where I came from, people say, used to, old people used to talk about going in the closet and closing the door and communing with God. You've got to find a closet space, a place that's intimate for you to go in and talk to the God of, of your belief. Say, listen, you said this in the Bible. I 
can't do that. <laughs> My family didn't prepare me to do that. You got to get in there and wrestle with God. I bet you God is resilient enough to wrestle back, right? The God that set the planets in motion, the God that, that billions of years ago exploded or imploded into all that we are and see, and so much so that the stuffness that we are uh, is still alive within us. We are made of stars, right? That's one of the things I remind myself of when I wake up in the morning that helps me stay tethered to the unbelievable so that I can get up and say and do things that stretch me beyond what the culture says, you know, a heavyset black woman ought to be able to do, right? I get to go out and be a queen that is 10 feet tall because God said so. The God that set the, the, the universe in motion is so much bigger and bolder than I feel like I can be when I wake up in the morning. But when I align myself with that boldness, then I can say and do what seems impossible when I'm in my small self, when I'm in my self that has forgotten that it is love that created me. Let me tell you, I forgot it really good. Some of us who had really hard childhoods, you couldn't tell me that I was loved. Let me tell you, I'm the best testimony you ever going to hear about how hard things were and how God can work in your life over time. It just gives me great joy. Even in these times that are so difficult, you know, I get to work with lots of, um, and I'm bl very blessed to, young activists. And s across all kinds of spectrums, race, class, uh, education, uh, all the way across the, the sexual expression and, and, and identity continuum. Just, and I'm very blessed to be in community with these folks. Those young people are exhausted, let me tell you. Exhausted. Because they want the world to be in better shape than it is. I get to be the one they tell on a, on a frequent basis uh, how much the people in my generation messed it up for them. You know, I set it up so they can tell, to speak the truth to me as they, some, on some days I wish I hadn't done that, right? Because they will tell you the truth. A lot of those folks would have told me the truth whether I set it up or not. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, they get, and that, I think they have a right to be angry. I mean, all of us can be angry if we want to. We can find enough to be angry about. But back to this idea of challenging what seems to be so, what seems to be possible. You've got to do some work. We've got to, we've got to stretch ourselves spiritually to do, to do that. So those young people really uh, inspire me to, to work, do some of this work that I'm sharing with you. Like, we have to find bridges across huge theological and political divides in terms of how they think. I was formed in a whole world that actually isn't so anymore. They live in a world that's emerging. I live in a world that's changing daily, right? And so, uh, and often I am triggered by things that they say I'm sure they are as well, by things that I say. It is love, it is that kind of illogical, unreasonable love that lets us go in and, and uh, get in tuned with our own spiritual toolboxes, that lets us go in and check what it is we've said. Is there something, is there some bridge to be built? Is there something I need to look at again? Like that's different for each person. That's different for each person. But what is the work for me? What is the invitation? What is the actual loving invitation that I have to keep coming toward rather than find reasons to back away, right? It's just the work of these times. Sometimes I have that work just within myself, not to back away when things feel bigger and harder than I actually want to have on my agenda for that day. It's a lot of work, but I think it's a lot of work also to be uh, uh, looking at the world as a, a place that's falling apart and, oh my God, what are we going to do? I think that takes energy as well. We might as well use our energies in ways that will help lift us up. Some days I wake up and I want to be, I, I wish my feet were two inches off the ground. Now, what was challenging to navigate, and then I turn on the news. Boom, feet back on the ground real fast. <laughs> you know, it's so, so many really hard things are happening. 
you know, during the beginning of the, the, the pandemic as we know it to be, when they said it started, you know, every day reporting all those people dying, and people are still dying, way too many every day, right? My heart breaks every time. That song actually came out of that. My heart is broken open. I felt like my heart was broken and there was no, I wonder, and I even wonder if this was true before. It felt like you have a heartbreak and you have some time to recover. There was no recovery time. Every day, just a whole onslaught of big painful things, nowhere in the body to reconcile or get a chance to metabolize it. And the meaning I made is, you know, we need to, that onslaught in order to break out of the forms we were in, right? At a spiritual level, th there's meaning there, I think. You know, I'm not going to be able to rest in between the heartbreak because then I can go back to the old form and the old belief system I had. There was no time for that. And thank God for that, right? Keep breaking me open, God. Please open to me so that I can be a living expression of the first implosion of the universe and talk about and be about and love like all, with everything I got instead of being distracted by the extraordinary and true. You know, people are suffering. I don't want to, to belittle that, right? And we're not always suffering all the time. And, you know, the thing, the thing that I came to learn, especially with watching the news, is the compassion or the, the preciousness of who I can be if it's not happening to me. It, let me tell you, if your loved one dies, then all the rest of us need to be doing what I'm talking about. Because it's your turn to be in that, the center of that heartbreak and do what you need to do to heal. If I'm watching the news, as much as my heart is breaking, it's not breaking like the person who just lost their child, right? So I get to be in prayer. I get to have my heartbreak broken. But I also, on behalf of our collective soul, I get to get down in there and, and pray and give thanks and find the joy, find the places where I can be liberation in this moment, right? If liberation and justice is always out there, I don't know, here's what I see. Here's liberation, here's me, it's always moving this way, right? But so what the wisdom says to me is take that justice and bring it in here. Don't always have it way out there. Bring it in here. Be liberation now, right? Be deep peace now in the ways that you can act that, right? Be um, uh, justice now. Be the end of oppression right now in the ways that you can. Oh, a preacher, we don't know how to do that. Yes, you do. You know how to ask God for what, what, is, what is mine to do in this moment. We don't have to go down to the UN like, like Greta did and tell them, you know, tell them off, right? It might be the next family picnic that you get to exude something a little different than you did the last time you saw. That might be your big leap, you know? We, there are things that we can do on, on, in, on scale, the, the little scale, the big scale, right? And the, 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 the more we sit in and luxuriate and remember that we come from God, that we are of God, then the more we can access across that scale from the small steps we can take to the one day you might wake up and say, you know, I do think I need to go on up there to the UN and see if I can speak. You, you. That might be you in the boldness of who you are down at a city hall and tell those jokers off, you know? <laughs> I mean, you have, we, each of us, it says so in your Bible that you, I think Christ said, you know, you'll be able to do what I did and more. Are you kidding me? If we took that seriously, are you kidding me? I want to stop right there because I just think we need to sit in that for a second. Christ said that. So I have come to invite you, to employ you, as I said to you, as I spend my life doing. Look, I, I'm not here to preach at you. This is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> this is really how I'm trying to live my life. And uh, what, what time is it? We, we're okay. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of, of a story uh, that's happening in me right now about this business of how love works. So I'm one of those people, like uh, many of us who had a very hard childhood. My childhood was filled with lots of violence. 
And so I have never actually been able to 100% hold this truth that I'm preaching to you. Every time I preach it, I hope that it actually delves in my soul a little deeper so that I can actually live the thing, you know? And there are moments when I do, so I'm grateful for the story. So recently, in my own reflection, going down in the place where it's very uncomfortable to go, I saw myself being carried by love back to the little me at five and six years old when my father is striking my mother. And I, what I saw was that love actually covered me in the moments of the depth of terror that I could, you know, the lack of control, the two people that I love, um, who are deep, deep in their own fear and pain, right? Watching that, not being able to do anything, being so, so afraid and scared. I am beginning to see that love actually was there. So before the terror could hit me, that the love actually came and bathed me, right? So I get to stand here in front of you right now talking about love when I could very easily have died from, from drugs or other things. Thank God, thank God, thank God, right? It's the grace of God that I stand here before you. But there was, it was love that held me, that covered me. Now, I wrestle with that love because that love turned into coping mechanisms that right, that right now I still struggle with, right? But at that time, that, that, that created the stars covered me so that I could be present in this circumstance that no child ought to have to be in. I was loved in that moment. Taking me, I'd be 65 in September. It take, took me 50 years to get that. That I was 50 years, y'all, to get that. I actually was loved. And I'm going to go a little bit further. Love also covered the heart of my father as he reached out in the only way that he knew and violence to try to deal with how oppression had actually just smashed him, right? Love covered his heart. I believe that. Love covered my mother's heart, right? Now, that's not to say that I think that oppression is all right. I'm not saying that. I'm saying and that, that place is where I write those sentences from. It is possible, I believe, that love is with us in the place. Because I used to believe that I had to fix myself before I would be worthy to say that, I am, that God loved me or that I'm, that I'm lovable. I used to believe that. But, but my deep work is teaching me that love is there, was there. That blows my mind. You know, when I got that insight, I could feel the cells in my body rearranging themselves so that the day, now, this day, I can say that I am loved. I can say it and know it and mean it in my body, not because the book says I'm supposed to, but I'm telling you what I'm talking about in my own journey has brought me to a place where um, I never believed it could happen. I, never, I actually never believed that I would see love in those places. I never believed that. So what it gives me access to is now I can, I can actually see love down here uh, uh, in, in the hole we can't feel. I can actually believe it because I'm living it. Now, every, we don't all have that experience all the time, right? But wherever you are, wherever you are bold enough to dare to see God's love intimately, I believe it's pure alchemy. It's pure alchemy. We're not asking big enough questions in our world, right? All the issues, abortion, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the political divide, all the really hard things. We are stuck. We're not asking big enough questions. We're not asking questions that are grounded in and emerge from the big, bold love that created the universe. We're not asking those kind of questions. We can't find bridges 
to cross to each other because we're not asking big enough questions. So family, today I invite you into this conversation. I invite you, I implore you, because it's so good, it's so good. It's been very, very hard, right? I, this, this uh, I can't tell you in a 15-minute sermon how many nights I have cried, how many mistakes I have made, and I feel like I'm still paying for where I have latched, lashed out. I never hit anybody like my dad, but if I go back over the thing, I've made a lot of mistakes that will take me to the end of my life of forgiving myself for. I don't know, I hope I'm not the only one. I'm hoping I'm not the only one in the room, right? But love says to keep going. Love says you keep every day. You forgive what you can. Love says you stretch. Love says you keep talking about how good it is. And sometimes when you don't feel like it, you talk about it until you can, you, you, you can pull yourself into it. Like whatever it means for you. I'm sharing with you my journey, and I understand that each one of you will have your own journey to the extent to this, this speaks to you or not. But wherever you are, whatever your journey is, I, I pray for you the kind of trajectory that starts you where you are and sends you and into discoveries that you never knew could happen. Doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. If God can love me in, 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 in that kind of violence, I don't think there's any place anywhere where love can't go. Now this is my sermon to you. Let us love no matter what. No matter what. We're well, Reverend Preacher, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can say it even if you can't do it yet. You can talk yourself into it. You can walk your way into it with the scripture, with community, with a continuous forgiveness and compassion. And that's just the start. That's just the start. That's just a little piece of the broadness of what God's love is. Just every story in here, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a beginning point, every story in here that ends in the heart and mind of God. Ashe, amen, amen, amen. Love no matter what, amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Margarita. What a gift your words are to us today. Um, friends in the sanctuary, see your faces, so I'm assuming you can hear me okay, but for someone just interrupting, if that's not the case. We're good. Fantastic. Thank you. And Palmer, I'm so grateful for your camera work. It is such a gift. Thank you. I'm really loving it. Friends, this is our time then where we get to uh, uh, really kind of gather in this beautiful teaching we've been gifted with and come to the time of our prayers of our community. And so I invite you to, we invite you to take a moment to reflect on, on what that might mean for you. There's offertory information in your printed bulletins as well as on the screen, as well as in the links that Priscilla sent out by email this week. And while we are receiving our offertory, we're going to sing just the first verse of Take My Gifts, which is number 562. And the walls will be up on the screen.